from here. This is kind of a weird angle, but I'm just going to go with it. Uh, since there was some interest in Interview with the Vampire, Lestat and Louis, I thought we'd talk about their relationship specifically. But first, your Cajun word of the day, your Cajun French word, couillon. Couillon. This is a word that you would use uh, if somebody did something stupid. Um, you know, like if you were to walk into a door, you know, hurt yourself in some ridiculous way, you would look at the person and say, couillon. Like, what's dummy? What are you doing? So that's your word. Now let's talk about the stat in the week. Uh, before we can talk about the relationship, though, we've got to talk about them individually as characters because their background informs where they're coming from and how they interact. We'll start with Lestat. He was mortal in the years during the reign of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, the youngest son of an, of an aristocrat, but unfortunately the aristocrat was very poor. This family was very poor. He was the youngest of seven, but only three survived to adulthood. Um, and Lestat felt very kind of left out of his family because he was not like his brothers and father. And he was a lot more like his mother, but his mother was very aloof, very withdrawn. Um, she kind of cold, basically. So he, uh, he provided for the family by hunting game. They lived not in the city, but out in the Fafifons. There's another word for you. Uh, Fafifons is, you know, kind of the same thing as a BFE, like just way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so he spent his youth um, insecure insecure in every possible way. He was food and materially insecure. He uh, was spiritually insecure. Um, they, you know, they were a religious family, but he kind of at some point had kind of a crisis. Um, he began to like morbidly fear dying and, uh, you know, emotionally insecure because his needs were not being met on that level either. Which explains a lot of, sorry, my cat's here, so I'm just kind of, um, explains Lestat's desire for constant validation, his need for, like, that amount of affection. He found it by, you know, going into stage work when he runs away to Paris, um, and, and then later, like, when he becomes a vampire, his, his some some of his needs are met, like his material needs are met because he becomes wealthy. Um, the vampire makes him leaves him a bunch of money. His spiritual needs are not necessarily met, but he no longer worries about them because he's now immortal. So he does not worry about heaven or hell or death anymore. Um, but his emotional needs uh, are still all over the map and his desire for validation and his need to, um, I don't know, connect with others remains obviously the same or even more intense because now he feels even more outside of the human race, you know, and he, he struggles with that. Uh, so that's Lestat in a nutshell. Um, He's also a little bit, you know, insecure in the sense that um, he's not very well educated. Uh, he spent like a year in school, I want to say, like at a monastery, and then he wanted to become a monk, and his family was like, nope, that's not happening, and they took him out of school. So, like I mentioned in the last video, he didn't really learn to read very well. I think he could read some prayers, he could write his name. It was like, it was very basic. Um, so anyway... Louis, uh, who is some um, like a hundred years ish younger, uh, I can't remember exactly the year, but by the time Lestat gets to him, Lestat's been around for a bit. Um, Louis, insecure in other ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk about Book Louis first, but Book Louis, uh, plantation owner, he, you know, he's 
he's inherited it from his father, his family's there, he's got this brother who's, like, religious to the extreme, like, Paul sees visions, he hears voices, um, and Louis is of a different kind of <laughs> mind than Lestat, where Louis believes that love is about kind of putting up with, um, and so he kind of lets Paul be Paul, be weird, he just kind of like um, enables, I guess is the word, and, until Paul dies. Um, and then there's the guilt, and again there's the, 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 and the grief, and you can see how Louis being an enabler and Lestat being somebody who needs the constant kind of validation just kind of sets them up on this path that does not go well. Like, Louis is an intellectual, he's very, like, soft, and Lestat is very big and chaotic um, because he wants that amount of attention. And on paper, you know, opposites attract and these things should complement each other, but it ends up being pretty toxic. <laughs> almost immediately. Um, in the book, Lestat wants Louis' property and his money. He actually brings his father to the plantation to kind of stash his dad. His father's blind and doesn't know Lestat is a vampire. And There are all these other reasons um, that Lestat chooses Louis uh, besides just I saw him and he was nice looking. Um, it was more like, he meets my needs, and uh, Lestat's whole life has been about trying to meet his needs, right? And Louis is an easy target because he's grieving and he kind of doesn't care, and, <laughs> and it goes from there. So that's kind of where they intersect. They, is you know, as it goes, um, Louis thinks Lestat being much older <laughs> and, um, you know, must have knowledge. Each of them are kind of, Louis is still looking for an under, a spiritual understanding that Lestat immediately kind of discarded the moment he realized he was, you know, immortal. He was like, okay, then I don't need to worry about God or heaven or hell or evil or any of that because I'm kind of, I exist outside that. And Louis can't accept that. Louis is like, even if we exist, you know, outside humanity, we're still, you know, we still have spiritual obligations. I don't know. I'm, it's, it's, but anyway, he's just, um, he's definitely still, and, and, and Lestat kind of poses it as, well, he's still kind of in his mortal period where he's still trying to live like a mortal and eventually as the world changes, he'll change. But um, Louis never quite does that. Now in the television series, this Louis um, also has insecurities bred of like his place in society as a black man he's a he's a business owner and and successful but still looked down upon and um uh so he his insecurities come from a time and place that you know puts him there and also i mean he does have the the brother but also his family um kind of giving him a hard time about what he does for a living um, because they don't consider it proper or appropriate. Uh, they would rather, they're, they're more of the, would rather be less wealthy but more respectable, <laughs> I guess. Um, so there's that. It's, it's still like that whole, like, what's interesting is that Louis and Lestat tend to try to one-up each other. They, Lestat, <laughs> so Louis, you know, becomes this book, well, the interview with the vampire book in the world of the Vampire Chronicles gets out and gets popular, even though people accept it as fiction. 
And Lestat decides, well, he can he can do better. He's going to be a rock star, you know? Like, it's like, oh, really? You got popular? Well, look at me. I'm now this major rock star. So, you know, I, that's just Lestat. He's always going to, like, he's always going to try and go one better um, because he wants to be the star of the story. And, he, I mean, he essentially becomes the star of the story after interview we get Lestat books pretty you can see them behind me here but um you can see that most of them are Lestat I mean we get Marius this is a little more of Louis we get Armand but a lot of this over here this is Lestat and then we go back to Lestat um we get Prince Lestat you can see I still have it on my shelf I, I I'm trying to decide if I want to buy um, the Atlantis one, just so I have them all, even though I'm probably never, ever, ever going to read it. <laughs> it was not, this, this one was not good. It was not good. Um, I keep thinking maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and read it again. Maybe I'll read my way all the way through again. Um, it's been so, so long. But, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, you I, did they love each other? I think in their own way, yes, but it wasn't, like, neither one of them could love the other in the way that they needed. Um, and if you think about it in the terms of when the compromise becomes sacrifice as opposed to actual compromise, then there's something wrong with the relationship, right? Like, if you're, if you're having to give up everything for the other person, um, then that's not healthy or good. That's going to foster resentment. Uh, Louis realized he couldn't get what he wanted and needed from Lestat, which was answers and, and a kind of companionship on, on a more like stable level. Um, and Lestat, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think Lestat, maybe somewhere down the line he did, but I'm not sure he... he for Lest Lestat's one of those where, like, too much is never going to be enough for him, um, and that's just kind of deep, deeply rooted in him uh, <laughs> because of where he comes from and his youth. So that's my, like, little psychological, in a nutshell, take on their relationship. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting lots of things because, again, it's been a long time. I'm sure there's a lot more that could be said <laughs> about the two of them. Uh, I think for the 1970s, the book was somewhat progressive in showing, if not a homosexual relationship, although it could be argued it is one, a homoerotic relationship, and not only that, but they, you know, adopt a daughter. Like, um, clearly the television show in this day and age is able to do and say more. I think then the books and movies could even, you know, 30 to 40 some odd years ago. Uh, but yeah, um, I think, you know, Lestat's more, he's bi or pan or like indiscriminate, both in killing and in loving, it seems. And Louis, I, I think, I don't know, maybe all of the vampires, because of their nature, just eventually become, like, indiscriminate in that way. But I think Lestat, even in life, he fell in love with actresses, he fell in love with Nicholas, you know, he, like, he was just kind of, he would take it, he kind of would take it wherever he could get it, and that's partly because he's, you know, pan or bi or whatever, but partly because um, he didn't feel like he could afford to be picky in some ways. And that, uh, you know, that's sad. I mean, you I think you're supposed to find him a little bit sympathetic, uh, at least especially after the first book. The first book is not meant to make the stat sympathetic at all. But going forward from there, hearing it from Lestat's point of view, you are supposed to, if not sympathize, identify, or at least understand um, I think you're, you know, you're supposed to go, oh, okay, you know, I see, I see, I see, I get it. But anyway, 
again, just some fun chit chat about the two of them, where they're coming from. Um, the complications with Claudia is something we can talk about later. <laughs> Parenting styles <laughs> amongst vampires. I feel like I should just write like a, a paper, put it in a journal somewhere. <laughs> okay. I will see you next time I think of something or if somebody like has something they want to hear my thoughts on vampires or otherwise um, writing, reading, whatever, let me know and I will talk to you later.